obviously we know there was opposition to the women's suffrage movement, but what sort of popular misconceptions do we have about this opposition and what form that it, it actually took? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really easy to assume that well, it must have been the right old stick in the mud to oppose women's suffrage because, you know, and it must have been mostly men because they would, you know, why would any woman oppose women's suffrage? And I, and I think it's really important to unpick what those, who those opponents were because it tells us a very different story about the women's suffrage campaign and how it changes over, over a period of time. In 1889, there was an organised petition against women's suffrage, and its leaders really weren't those who you might have expected. So the, the, the real mover behind it was Mrs Humphrey Ward, a, a very famous novelist of the period, who'd founded a university settlement, engaged in social work, who um, was very interested in the question of women's work um, within county councils, within local government, around issues like education and the poor law, the looking after of adopted and fostered children, for example. So at the local level, um, these are women who are very involved in politics, but many of them had a very strong resistance to the idea that women had any role in national government. So it's that split between what a woman's role is in national politics and what their role is in local politics that really divides um, opinion in this period in the late 19th century. Um, one of the people who signed up to that petition in 1889 was the social worker, social investigator Beatrice Webb, who became very famous in the 20th century century as one of the leading lights of the, the Socialist Fabian Society. And, and in, her, in retrospect, in her autobiography, she calls it a false step. She knows this wasn't quite what she meant, but she's very clear about why she signed it. And, and one is that she feels she felt no political discrimination against her as a woman. She'd had every advantage she could have wanted, and she didn't have to go out and get a paid job, which a brother would have had to have done, for example. But the other thing she mentions is that's really enlightening, I think, is that when she changed her mind in the early 20th century, so by 19 Six, she wrote a letter to say she changed her mind and was in favour of women's suffrage. She said she'd seen a real change in what national government was trying to achieve in that period. So in the 19th century, national government was fairly limited in what its brief was and what its remit was. All those things that we might think of as the state now didn't really exist in the 19th century. So by the early 20th century, Beatrice Webb said she'd seen a real change in what the, the state was, that now the state was involved in the early stirrings of, of the welfare state as we know it now. There was national insurance provision, there was the start of a kind of national health provision under the poor law. In all kinds of ways, through education and labour legislation, what the state was was changing, and she felt this meant that women's particular input was needed, was going to be of real value in the future of that government. Government was no longer longer just about war or no war, tax or no tax, um, diplomacy. These things had changed. The state had expanded and it needed women's voices involved in it.